This is from myyesnetwork.com. Coach SJ. The uh, myyesnetwork. Coach SJ. SJ. One more. Yep. Okay. It's not really coach though. Okay. Looking at our division rival. Alma. Yes, even at our division rival. Alma. Will the Baltimore Orioles be big players? The off-season market. On the off-season market. Being that they had such a huge year. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> a huge year. So take a look at my team and tell me. Looking at our newest rival, the Boston Royals, the biggest players on the off-season market. Being that they had such a huge year. Looks good. 3 or 4 9 1. Mm -hmm. uh, do you I, find I'm, that just says I'm going back, back and forth between him and Jay. Yeah. Hold on one second. Hey, Jared. Good speaker. Hi. We're going to try to uh, be up there, everybody, uh, in the chairs by 545. 545? Okay, they're still working on the set, so I don't know if that'll happen, but I'll let Cooney know. Uh, you don't know if the set will be ready by 545, you mean? Yeah, I mean, they're still tweaking all sorts of things, is all I'm saying. I would still probably have them come up at 545. I'm just telling you that might be clo a little bit after that. Awesome. How are they? See, these are great. It's just... If, if I could take advantage of the booking, but for my travel dates, it'd be perfect. But it doesn't look like any of them are my travel dates. You probably have them, but they, you know, they're just, you know. It'd be easier just getting this thing over and then just, uh... see everybody after the, uh, the season, you know, for uh, the first of our Yankee Baseball Tonight shows. We've changed the name uh, yet again, so if it's uh, referred to by anybody, it's Tonight now, because it's only uh, two times a week. Yankee Baseball Tonight. Tonight. Uh, tonight. Uh, so uh, Bob will bring everybody in, and uh, the first segment is going to be, Joel, all about the Yankees um, in, in any, you know, way you can imagine it. So with that being said, uh, you know, what, uh, what, what, what are the stories that you're chasing right now? What stories do you think kind of suggestions are put here? You know, the myriad of free agencies, the guys, you know, declining the qualifying offers on Friday. Where, where do we stand with that? Yeah, I think, I mean, I wrote about the other day, I think the most important story with the Yankees is they've got to get Corroda done. Um, because, you know, you can fake right field, but you can't fake number two starter. Um, you know, their offseason just sets up a lot better at, Pettit and Kuroda are back. If you have CC, Pettit, Kuroda, you have a one, two, and three starter, you're way ahead of the game. And Pettit basically said he's not going to take forever to make right. the decision. I assume he's coming yeah. back. Um, you know, the, the other thing everyone wants to do at this time of year is you just want to shorten the list of things you have to do. You know, if you're trying to do six things, it's very hard to get them to tick off in the order you need them and have all the money and resources to do it, so you want to get to the point, like, if the Yanks know they have Corona coming back, well, now you don't need a starting pitcher. How do, how do you replace that if he leaves? It yeah. shouldn't be that hard if he's a one-year problem. Well, if he agrees to, you know, the question right. is... Other people are interested. Yeah. I mean, I talk to a lot of people who know him at the GM meetings, and what's interesting is how many people say that he wants to go back and play in Japan next year. Mm. That he's a different cat. That he promised everyone that he would go back to Japan and play while he's still a good pitcher. He wouldn't go back there for a victory lap when he couldn't play anymore. So it's important. And that's one of the biggest reasons why he only wants to do one-year deals. Is so that he knows he has something in the tank when he goes back. The closer position for the Yankees is so highly valued because Mariano has been so great and is so iconic and important for a lot of reasons. 
But as we've seen, as we see almost every October now, it's like well, that's what it's a said. really overvalued commodity. They yeah. almost need to just get get through Mariano, let him finally go out the way he wants to, mm -hmm. and then make that an area of where they can save. Because that's an area where they should be able to save on a 189 payroll. Well, well, you're arguing, you're arguing two points. You're saying that it's an overvalued commodity. At the same time, it's a huge question mark for the answer. But I think he tempers it. Right. But, right. That's why but, I, but I think he tempers it well by stressing that it's an iconic position with what Mariano has put forth in his, in his body of work. Maybe it's good that this is the year before the 189 thing really kicks in, where they can say, you know, they can overdo it mm -hmm. and we won't owe that. But you know, like they can they can pay a lot of that position this year, one more time. And then maybe it works out to that's the year Mariano retires okay. and they get under it. So let, let me say this. If if the most important points that you're gonna make off the top, Joel, the starting rotation, and Tyler, the back end of the bullpen, I, I would I would say that you know we'll let that conversation flow about, you know, as long as it as it needs to. 